Hey, Orchard Kids. My name is Holly. Do you know what that is? That is sign language. Sign language is a way of communicating using visual gestures or signs. It is used for people to communicate if they are deaf and can't hear. How cool is that? I am so pumped to be here with you today to share a lesson from God's Word. So together, let's grab our Bibles and open up to the book of Mark. And we're going to be in chapter 7 again, verses 31 through 37. Now, before we dive in, I want to try something with you. I'm going to cover my ears, and I'm going to talk to you without using my voice, and I want to see if you can guess what I'm trying to say. Did you get it? Could you tell that I was trying to say to you, Jesus understands our needs? Probably not. Let's be honest. Imagine how hard it would be to talk to people if you couldn't hear them and you couldn't speak to them. Nowadays, we have sign language, like I showed you a couple minutes ago. When we do kids' worship, sometimes we use sign language. We use love or Jesus or thank you, even hi, if you wave, that is sign language. Sign language is such a blessing, but back in Bible times, we don't have any proof that there was sign language yet. So this brings us to today's story. Jesus is sailing a little bit further down the Sea of Galilee, and he cannot be hidden. We know that everywhere he goes, people recognize him and they come to him. So in our Bibles in verse 32, it says that they brought to him a deaf man who had difficulty speaking and begged Jesus to lay his hand on him. So now we don't know how long this man couldn't hear or speak, but we do know that this is a terrible way of life for him. Imagine being trapped in the silence. His friends obviously loved him a lot because they traveled from really far away to get him to Jesus. Now let's take a minute and think about how that conversation happened because if he couldn't hear them and he couldn't speak to them, how did they explain to him that he was gonna go see Jesus, that he needed to go see Jesus? Maybe they used gestures like please and maybe they hugged him and comforted him and tried to show him that it was gonna be fine and that they could trust him. Whatever happened, it worked because they did trust him as his friends trusted Jesus. Now here's where our compassionate Jesus comes in. The Bible says that he took the man away from the crowd in private. He didn't want anybody staring at him or making fun of him. He didn't want the man to be embarrassed. And so he brought him aside in private. And then Jesus put his hands on the man's ears and he spit and then he touched the man's tongue and looked up to heaven. And then he sighed a deep sigh and he said, be opened. Now remember, this man didn't know Jesus. So Jesus is careful and he's gentle with him. Why do you think he touched him? Why do you think he looked up to heaven? Well, the man couldn't hear. And so Jesus is showing him, he's touching his ear saying, I'm gonna help you hear. And then he touches his tongue saying, I'm gonna help you speak. And then he shows him by looking up to heaven that this is not a magical formula, that this is a gift from God. And then he says, be opened. And the Bible says, immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak clearly. His tongue was loose, and he was set free. This man maybe never heard his own voice speaking, and now he is speaking in full sentences. Imagine what that must have been like. His friends were watching from a far distance because remember, Jesus took him in private and they were over there having faith that Jesus was gonna heal him and that he was gonna be able to hear and speak. And then they hear their friend's voice that they may have never heard before. How amazing must that have been? Now, Jesus tells them not to go and tell everybody, but the more he tells them that, the more people they tell. And it's never okay to disobey Jesus, but we can understand how excited they must have been to, to see this miracle happen and how they wanted to tell everybody and they wanted everybody to worship Jesus. Now, the Bible says that they were extremely astonished and it says that they said he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Now, the picture I want you to remember today is not about this man being healed, but about a kind king coming to heal this man. There was nothing special about this man, but Jesus is the one that made him special. The same Jesus that loved this man, he loves us too. And he came to this earth as a newborn baby to live a perfect life. He never did anything wrong so that he could save us and make us clean. Just like Jesus came to this man and met him where he was, he couldn't speak, he couldn't hear, he gracefully, carefully 
took him and he, and he helped them and he showed him that he could help him. And he wants to do the same thing to you. He wants to come to you wherever you are and gently show you that he can help you too. Do you trust in Jesus? Do you have faith in him? Are you telling your friends about him? I want to remind you to pray about those things and to give your life to Jesus. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you teach us lessons from the Bible, Lord, that, that we can still apply to our lives today. Lord, we thank you that you are a, a kind and gentle King that heals and cares for us and takes care of us. Lord, we want to trust you with everything that we are. Lord, we want to give you our lives. We want to be clean, and we know that being clean can only come from you. Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for all the kids that are listening. Lord, thank you for their parents. Um, Lord, thank you for your word. And, and um, Lord, we just love you and we praise you. In your name I pray, amen. All right, kids. Now, singing worship songs is one of my very favorite things to do. And we all know that we can be alive again through Christ. So you know what to do. Get on your feet, turn your music up, and let's worship.